Hey guys, a fellow vintage TV enthusiast on the Video Karma forums is restoring an Admiral set with a 20Z1 chassis. And he had some questions about it, which reminded me that I have an Admiral set with a 20Z1 chassis. And it also reminded me that I've never actually taken a look inside this TV. I got it a couple summers ago and uh, put it here in my living room and uh, that's about it. All I know is that the cabinet is in fantastic condition, other than a little dusty, and it has the control door, which are almost always missing, which has led to a joke that the owner's manual had uh, for, the, for step one, break off control door. Mine's got a crack in it, but uh, I'm very happy to get one that's actually intact. I guess it's just held on by a little plastic nub on either side. And, uh, you know, if you open this down just a little bit too much force, it'll break right off. And I suspect kids uh, probably were pretty rough on these, too. It's a bit dirty in here, as you can imagine. It's quite a pain to clean out all these little holes. This whole cabinet is one gigantic piece of Bakelite. I think this is the biggest Bakelite cabinet ever made. I sometimes see this being referred to the biggest Bakelite, but this is a 10-inch set. And this is a 12, so physically uh, it's bigger. And I know that there was a later model with a rectangular screen, which might even be a little bit bigger than this one. Uh, on the other hand, the Bakelite is a little bit thinner, so I think this weighs the same or maybe even a bit less. Let's take a look back here. It does have the original metal back, and it's in very good condition, and that's, uh, that's a fairly rare thing. Often these are missing. Pretty much, well, backs on lots of sets, like there's one right above it, are missing. Uh, service techs would, I imagine, remove these to work on the set, replace tubes, whatnot, and would just fail to put them back on. Or sometimes they get uh, pretty mangled up, like this uh, disc that sticks out might get bashed in, or, or they simply just rust. There's actually nothing in the bottom of the cabinet. Some admirals had a split chassis with a power supply. An audio amp would be down here and there'd be a big umbilical cord going to the top chassis, but not just a lot of open air and a little speaker down there. Recently I picked up a bunch of service manuals and I did find this set. It's not in the greatest shape because it got wet and uh, some of the pages stuck together. But uh, it's better than nothing. There's the label. It is a model 22X12. Now, uh, let's see. What did I put down here? It's tubes. Yeah, I don't think they're tubes from this set. I think they're tubes from a different Admiral set. I just put them down here for safekeeping. And I've seen that on a few other sets like this where there was nothing down below where people would just store stuff down here. Unfortunately, all I've got in mind is just a, a power cord and a lot of dust and cobwebs. So, I'm going to grab a screwdriver and pop this back off and uh, take a closer look inside. Okay, I got the back off and again, you can see what nice condition this is in. So, no rust removing for me on this, which is a nice change of pace. And here is the chassis itself. So put your tube up front, high voltage lead, high voltage cage in here. And there's the power transformer. The rectifier tube plugs directly into the transformer, like some Philco radios. That was basically to save space. Uh, this is a, like I said, a single chassis. So they had to cram everything up into this, this top area. Power transformer, rectifier, filter capacitor, all the uh, the tuner and all the IF stages. Of course, the high voltage and I think the vertical and the audio are up front there. Looks to be in pretty good shape, just dusty. The one thing I have already done as memory serves, let's check the picture tube and it tests really strong. But, there's one little problem with this set. And that is, the picture tube has this nice line burned into it. 
it's fairly common on old TVs for the vertical to go, either to shrink or just become a single horizontal line. Somebody must, must have left this set playing for a while. They may have even left it running just to listen to it, even though the picture was burned out, or maybe they fell asleep and didn't notice it when the picture collapsed. So unfortunately, got a nice line. I won't know uh, if that's really noticeable until I get this set up and running again. And I hope it's not, because otherwise the picture tube test is really strong. And uh, this uses a 12 LP4A picture tube, and those are getting kind of hard to find and kind of expensive. I don't have any spares, so I hope, uh, hope this is serviceable. I cleared off the top so we can get a better look at it, and uh, this is definitely in the best condition of any bake lights that I've ever picked up. So no need for wet sanding. I don't even think I need to buff this out. Uh, just a good cleaning and, and that should do it. On a, another set, one with this diamond pattern down here, I did clean these out and I found the best way to do it is to actually remove the speaker board from the back side and then take like a sock or something and kind of work it back and forth from both sides and get in all these nooks and crannies. Alright, so let's see about pulling this chassis out. There's probably four, maybe six bolts that, that would normally hold it in, but I found that is what's often the case is that most of them are missing. And in fact, in this case, it looks like every bolt is missing. Should have been one here, one here, and probably one there, and two more on this side, and there's not a single bolt holding this chassis in. So another word of warning, if you pick up a set uh, before you transport it or pick it up or anything, make sure that either you remove the chassis and handle it separately or make sure it's secured properly. If I was to tip this ca this cabinet back, this chassis would just come sliding right out and the picture tube would shatter and make a huge mess. I got this chassis off of Craigslist, or I should say I found it on Craigslist locally and I uh, drove out and picked it up and uh, <laughs> I'm glad I did because when I talked to the seller he said if uh, nobody picked it up he was going to turn it into a fish tank or a bar or something like that which is far too often the fate of these old sets people take out the chassis quite often throw it away or if they've got any sense they'll sell it on eBay for somebody maybe who needs the parts and then they uh, stick some crap uh, inside here, a fish tank or a picture or uh, or whatever, or modern TV. Uh, I really wish people wouldn't do that. These sets are getting rarer and rarer and a uh, you know, piece of American history and they deserve far better fate than being turned into a fish tank. Okay, so I think all I have to do is pull the knobs off the front and this chassis should slide straight out the back. When you pull these out, uh, you might be a little careful, like I said, make sure you get the knobs off. And then to actually pull it out, I put a hand on either side, like about here, and just carefully wiggle it to make it, to loosen it up and then start to slide it back. When it gets far enough, I slide my fingers and get a grip under the edge. But be careful because these chassis are made out of sheet steel, and there's no handles or anything, so when you're carrying it, uh, one, you don't want to shove your fingers up too far underneath and poke and damage coils and wires and whatnot. But also this metal is going to dig into your hands. Uh, these are kind of heavy, so you might want to wear leather gloves or something like that. Um, uh, like I said, these this probably weighs, oh, I don't know, 30 pounds, maybe more. And all that weight right on the flesh of your fingers can be a little painful. And uh, so be aware of that because the last thing you want to do is get surprised or find out it's heavier than you think and drop it because uh, that, uh, that would be very, very bad. All right, that came out fairly easily. You can see where the bolt should have been. I've heard that there is a protective screen that would go over this area to protect the bottom of the chassis. I currently have four Admiral Bakelite sets like this. And none of them have the screen, nor have I ever seen one in person. Uh, and, and I was kind of convinced that they, they just didn't exist until somebody posted a, a photo online recently. And indeed, there was a, a fine screen that would go over here. And that might be what this hole was for originally, was to hold it in place. 
I don't know, should be easy enough to fabricate something. Just get some uh, perforated sheet metal, something like this, and just cut out a piece to cover this area. Well, here's the chassis. It's quite similar to the Ad earlier Admiral 20X1 chassis, which was used in sets like the 20X122, which also was just a single chassis. Picture tube looks to be in decent shape other than that line. It's a Sylvania 12 LP4A. Might be the original, I'm not sure. Um, so most TV manufacturers did not have the capabilities to make their own picture tubes. They would rebrand or use other, other manufacturers. For sure, Dumont, Sylvania, and RCA made their own picture tubes. But I don't think Admiral ever did. Uh, Admiral would hold their picture tubes in place with a cloth strap like this. Looks like this one has slipped back. I'm sure originally it was going over these pieces here. So I'll scooch that forward. And then it's held on by a couple hex nuts here. So you can loosen these up, it'll loosen the strap up. And you can remove the picture tube if you ever need to. Well, it does have some rust. I thought I got lucky and there wasn't any, but a few spots there. There's the tuner, and then uh, this would be, I think, the sound IF and the video IF. These sets use the split IF, one side for video and one side for audio, which can be a real pain in the butt. It's often, uh, when you use the fine tune to tune in a station, you can either get a good picture or good sound, rarely both at the same time. Because right after the mixer, they went to separate. They went their separate ways. Whereas newer sets had one stage of IF, and they did both the video and audio at the same time. And they would pick the audio uh, off of the video, the last video stage. So much easier to get um, a picture and audio with that uh, setup, or I should say, good picture and good sound at the same time. voltage cage and I think this is the one of the audio stages I'm not sure the audio oh, okay there's the audio output to the 6AS5 and another multi-section cap so there's only two can electrolytics now the guy online who's restoring one so there was a cap underneath that he had questions about so I'm going to tip this on its side take a closer look uh, I've worked on these sets before. I think the safest way to tip them on their side is to put this side down because you got this cage bracing here. And this picture tube is large enough that it just kind of reaches the edge, so the weight will be supported on the side of this picture tube and this. Just be careful that the strap is holding it in place. If this was loose and you put try to flip this on its side, it might put a lot of stress on this neck and the picture tube might snap off here. Or you could remove the picture tube altogether. I don't want to do that right now, though. You would have to take off the sockets, which is a bit loose on this. So I'll glue that on. Got to remove the ion trap magnet here, focus coil, the yoke. Then you can slide this out. Well, I should say you don't have to remove them, but you need to loosen them up. These you got for sure have to remove the socket and then remove this, and then uh, loosen these up a bit. And then you pull the tube out the front. As soon as I got this chassis tipped over, I grabbed my digital camera and took a ton of photographs. I always do that with any TV or radio project before I touch anything. I want to have as many reference photos from every angle as possible. So if I have any problems while I'm restoring it, I'm not quite sure where the wire used to go or how a part was positioned or what the value was, I'll have my reference photos to work off of. So here's what we've got. I don't see anything bad, which is great. I think there have been some repairs. Yeah, I'm sure there have. This capacitor is newer and it's just soldered on kind of crudely. Same with this guy here and this guy and probably this guy. So even way back in the 50s, the capacitors were failing already in the had to be replaced. 
Of course, I'll just replace all of them. That's a term, uh, or a term called shotgunning, is used to describe that process where you just shotgun the capacitors, meaning you just replace all the paper capacitors and the electrolytics, of course. Ceramics and micas are usually okay, like these uh, domino mica caps here, but uh, those can be bad too. But I just I do everything else, and if there's still problems, then I start checking those. How about this? Yeah, this looks like a replacement too. They use a huge power resistor on the focus coil on these sets, so that this is the focus control here. It's like a five watt wire wound potentiometer, and uh, they use this to, to drop it. Uh, these have been all bad, and nasty in a couple sets I've restored, so I'll just be replacing that with a new one right off the bat. So the vertical is bad. Well, a few th obvious problems with that would be vertical output transformer. This capacitor is probably part of the vertical output circuit. This could be bad. Could have a bad vertical output tube, or it could have a bad vertical oscillator tube. And least likely possibility is that there's a problem with the yoke. The vertical yoke windings could have a break or a short in them. My, my gut tells me it's this capacitor. So, yeah, I'm happy to say that this uh, looks to be in very good condition overall. Of course, screws are missing. Always screws are missing. This is the shield for the IF stages, and all three of the screws that should be down here are gone. Here's the big drum tuner. I need some grease, kind of hard to turn. These coils uh, plug in, and there is a set for each channel. So these are the coils for, for channel 9, channel 10, channel 13, channel 14. I'll pop one of these out just so you can see what they look like inside. Here's one side of the strip for channel 13. They're held on by a spring at one end and a clip on the other. They snap in. These brass contacts here lead to coils on the other side. Channel 13 is fairly high frequency, so these coils just cons consist of a couple turns of wire. One side, I believe, is for the oscillator, and the other side is for a uh, tuned uh, uh, antenna circuit. And you can see how dirty these contacts are. They should be nice, bright brass. That's why uh, often, uh, as part of ser regular servicing and maintenance, you would need to spray some contact cleaner in here and clean out all these contacts. These are really, really bad, so I definitely need to clean these. But, of course, we have no broadcast TV anymore, so I'll pretty much just be using Pride Channels 3 or 4. I'll focus on cleaning those, especially. Here's one of the strips for channel 3, which is a lower frequency, and you can see how many more turns of wire there are on it. Here's one of the strips for channel 3, which is much lower frequency than channel 13, and you can see how many more turns of wire there are on this coil. Now to tune these channels, they provide you with a little cutout here. And at the end of this strip, there's a little brass slug. So you can put this on a channel, feed a screwdriver, or actually a plastic alignment tool. You don't want to use a metal tool because that affects the coils. And uh, you tweak that coil. Easiest way I've found to do it is you put this on, say, channel 3 or 4, hook it up to your VCR, converter box, whatnot, and just watch it. And use an alignment tool and tweak it so you get the best picture and sound. You don't need to use a sweep generator or anything for that. I've tipped the chassis back down to talk about two last things. One is this gizmo. This is accessible from the back via this cutout here. And what this is for is centering the picture. You would actually grab a hold of this and move it this way to center the picture vertically by rocking this focus coil. And to center it horizontally, you would do this. There's a nice little feature Admiral came up with uh, 
they spun 1950, my older Admiral set, he would just have to reach into the set, loosen a wing nut, and then manually, <laughs> directly manipulate this coil, which is not the, not the safest thing to be doing. Speaking of safe things, I'm going to open up this and let's take a look at what's inside there. The reason I say safety is that this is where not only the AC power comes into the set, but this is where all the high voltage is generated. And there's a warning label here, blah blah blah. Should be performed by qualified personnel only. I don't know if I'm qualified, but I've done this a few times and I haven't killed myself yet. Oh, that's cute. I believe this should be a quarter amp fuse right here, which somebody has just soldered a bridge across. Uh, hopefully that <laughs> doesn't mean that something uh, has burned out, like the uh, the flyback. In fact, this is right here. It's a quarter amp fuse. This fuse would limit the amount of current going through this horizontal output tube and into the flyback. If something goes wrong with this circuit, you really want that fuse to blow because you don't want to put excessive current through, say, the flyback and burn it out because these are quite hard to find replacements for these days. This wire coming out here is the high voltage lead and it looks like there was some problem with arcing in the past because I've wrapped some electrical tape around it. I would suspect it's because it's leaning close towards this metal contact here and uh, it was arcing. So this is a horizontal output tube. This is what drives the current through not only this flyback transformer to make the high voltage but also through the horizontal yoke. So there's quite a bit of power going through here. The, the yoke is uh, basically there's uh, uh, just a few turns on the primary uh, wrapped around this iron core here and then around that are thousands and thousands of turns for the secondary. So that's kind of like a little tussle coil I guess. And then it comes out here to the rectifier tube and the rectified high voltage comes out at the base there and goes over to this tube. You want to be careful with these. This is a high voltage connector into the tube because the CRT is actually a giant capacitor. It's made of glass and the in inner surface is conductive. That's that gray coating you can see through the clear glass here. That's like a graphite coating on the inside. On the outside has a graphite coating which is grounded. So you've got a conductive surface, a glass insulator, a conductive surface. It forms a giant capacitor. So long after this set is powered off, there could still be quite a charge on there. It said it hasn't been turned on in years, so I'm not concerned about it. But even after a few days, it can pack a wallop. So, simple way to discharge it is clip a ground lead onto a screwdriver, like to the, to the frame here, slide it under that rubber cap until you make contact with the metal underneath. There we go. And since I've got it here, I might as well show you what that looks like. Underneath there is this little three-pronged metal cap that snaps onto this metal ring here. And that is your high voltage lead. And here's the set all back together. By the way, this set on top is also a Bakelite Admiral from the same era. I guess this would be the set for the cost conscious or space constrained. And uh, no, I am not going to plug this set in just to see what happens. I've been reading too many horror stories lately about guys bringing home really nice sets and then just plugging them in. And gee, what a surprise. Sparks, flames, smoke. You can't just plug these old sets in. Even if you found one new in the box from 1949, it doesn't matter. These capacitors were made out of wax and paper. They're organic. They decay with time just sitting on, on the shelf. And because they're organic, when they overload, overheat, they start burning. And you get a nasty mess. You can also burn out irreplaceable parts like the yoke, like the flyback transformer. So please, if you get a set, go over it first. Replace the capacitors. Hook it up to a Variac, monitor the current, or you will be sorry. Alright, enough preaching from me. I hope you enjoyed this video on this Admiral 22X12. That's all for now.